Hans Zimmer's Pirates of the Caribbean score is a great example of what it takes to write percussive parts that sound amazing in orchestral music. I mean, check this out. <laughs> You just notice now the impact it had on the mix when I removed the percussion from the picture. This is because like this percussive patterns is freaking amazing. It has a lot of drive, a lot of power, but it doesn't destroy our mix. Now, there's two things you need to take into account as to create percussion patterns like this one. First is that uh, you don't need Hansim percussion to write stuff like this, okay? You, you can surely do it with that library, but it's not like unless you have the library, you cannot write stuff like this. If you, feel, if you think that the libraries you own make up for the sound you can achieve with your music, you're a dork. That's not how it works. Your skills as a composer amount to what you can do in your music, okay? So from that aside, two things you need to know about this uh, percussive pattern. First, to achieve this, you need to have a frequency spectrum and frequency response in your percussion, a hugeness in sound, which is compares to the sound of your orchestra. <laughs> the orchestra here in the spectrum looks freaking huge, sounds huge, amazing. The percussion is the same. Second thing you want to have is a good degree of subdivisions and accents. This is something I talked about in the How to Write Epic Staccato Strings tutorial in five minutes. Check out that tutorial if you haven't. But now let's talk about how I wrote this percussive or how I rewrote this percussive pattern because Hans Zimmer wrote it all myself. Uh, I write kick ass percussive patterns too, but mine are too aggressive. This is a good example of like having something that sounds organic and also interesting. So, first thing you have is the pat accents. Okay, these guys. Here I'm playing those accents in Armageddon Ensemble from Damage. If we have this playing only with the, with the orchestra, it's not so good. So what you want to do is to add more detail and that's what beginners usually do. They're like, okay, it doesn't sound good. I need to have more chaos in my percussion so it's gonna sound better. And okay, so if you want to add more chaos, at least do it in the right way. The right way to do that is to add subdivisions. So adding rhythms inside the rhythms which are faster and thinner. I did that here in the Armageddon Ensemble. And I mean, like, the green guys. Okay, but this... is still shit! The reason for it is that I'm only doing super boomish low-end percussion. This is only the Armageddon Ensemble patch. In, the, in using this patch with such fast rhythms, I'm creating a lot of mud. So what I would do if I was a beginner, I would be like, oh, let me EQ this out. Or save it, is, save it with EQ and stuff. But that, I would do crazy curves and it would, you know, destroy the balance of my percussion, would make it sound weird or weak compared to the orchestra. Not good. What you need to do is to layer your percussion, which is something I talked about in previous tutorials as well. Let's see what I did to layer this. First thing. I left the low end percussion, so this like boomish percussion, for our main accents only. So that's what I did on the Armageddon Ensemble. I also did that on Epic Doll. But I also did a bit of the subdivisions here. I also did a, a bit of both in the Epic Tones from my Dio. And there's also a snare which is playing that, those parts too. If you just were paying attention, you're gonna notice you notice that each one has a different frequency response or a different timbre, right? Like the epic dolls and Armageddon Ensemble are more in the low end, the epic toms are uh, you know in the middle, snares are mostly in the highs. That's what you want. Use the instrument, the same instrument group, but they have a different timbre. That's how you do layering, okay? And then the other thing we have going on to get the huge sound, because this is still not enough. I mean, it's more clear, it doesn't destroy our mix now, but it's still not enough as the percussion in the example I showed you before. The reason for it is that the last part you need to have is symbols. I mean, these guys. They bring a lot of high end and high end in orchestral music or music in general means openness in a track, especially when you, the whole track doesn't have much high end. If you have these guys thundering through, whenever they play, they will open up the track a lot. And it's gonna sound freaking Amazing. So, as an example. Okay, that's because of symbols, okay? So they are very important. They seem like trivial, but they're not. Then below that, we have some shakers and tambourines because it's like a pirate track. Uh, to accompany the symbols, to layer the symbols again, to give them, beefen them, up, beefen them up, give them a bit more low end, I added these guys, which are like cycle rolls and trailer hits from 8 Dio Hybrid Tools 2, the trailer hit I made it myself by, you know, layering many different libraries together, so all the symbols together are freaking amazing! 
Okay, and the whole percussion. I said percussion. It's freaking great. That was just a bit of an introduction with percussion. If you want to dive deeper, there's two things I recommend you to do. First thing, listen to a lot of rock music because there's so much knowledge in what the drummers are doing. Like the drummer of Muse is an amazing example. Listen to what he's doing and try to replicate that in your music with percussive feels and all those sort of things. Two, check out the sponsor of this video, the Evanon Cinematic Music Course, which is a resource I reference all the time in my videos because it helped me a lot into figuring out orchestral music. I took that course many years ago when it was five times smaller than what it is now and it helped me immensely figuring out orchestral music or start to figure out that genre if you want to uh, get that course i'm gonna leave it down below in the description of this video i highly recommend it myself as someone who took it in the past of course if you take that you also need to study on top of that also if you buy new libraries stuff like that amazing get all the resources you can but then use it employ them and study them and really do the work because there's no point getting more libraries or courses if you then don't apply what you hear or watching my videos if you don't apply what I showed you. So get those things, everyone goes down below, listen to Muse, write 10 percussive patterns this week, and then come back to this video and check out if you learned. That's the way you're going to learn all this stuff. Otherwise, you just wasted five minutes of your life. Bye-bye.